Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I have a treat for you. We are going to play Near and Far using the Amber Mines expansion using the co-op rules. Yes, finally co-op for this game. I've loved the look of this game since I saw it, but when I saw it was competitive, I was like, my wife, I'm probably not going to really enjoy that. Well, when the Amber Mines expansion came out to be able to play cooperatively, oh, it was not even a question. <laughs> I backed it. I'm so happy I did. I am loving this game. So excited to show you this. So let's get going. Just like normal, this will be a setup video. Now, I am going to set this up as a campaign. So what that means is after this video, if you don't want to see any of the stories, then you may not want to continue watching. The stories aren't, I mean, at least in this first map that I've seen, haven't been too, I don't know what the word is, um, spoilery, but they might be if you really want to know nothing about the map if you want to go in. So I'm just letting you know that now. <laughs> but you certainly can watch this episode to see how to set up the game and see a little bit how it's different with the Amber Mines expansion. I'm not going to spoil anything here. Let's get going. When playing the campaign mode, you're going to want to go ahead and grab one of these character sheets. Now, there is also the character mode where you're actually trying to find the backstory of your specific character. And they, they have some sort of goal and you're trying to achieve that. I'm not playing with the character mode. I'm just doing campaign. So all we need are these uh, character sheets. We start out with one experience point that I'm going to use right away for one skill. And that skill is going to be the same for both of them. And that's called fishing. As you see here, this sheet shows you the talents for use with the Amber Mines expansion. And since we have one experience point, we are going to use the fishing. You start each game session with plus one food. So hey, we start with one food instead of zero. Our two characters will be Greer and Riza. Greer is going to be denoted by any of the yellow camp tokens, and Riza will be from any of the blue tokens. Just so you know, when you see them on the board, you know whose is whose. Now we want to set up our awesome map. <laughs> I love these maps. They're technically on a, just a storybook that you open up. Kind of reminds me a little of Stuff Fables in that way. Um, but so you're just set, essentially going to grab, if you're starting the campaign like I am here, you're going to start at map 2. You're going to go from maps 2 to 11 sequentially. You'll also grab your threat cards. You'll make sure to put them in order from numbers down here, 4 all the way to 20. Okay, And you keep those face up. And you have new ones in the expansion. Make sure to use those if you're using the Amber Mines expansion. You need to use those specific threat cards. You also have these quest tokens. Okay, They look like little books. You have to place them in each location that has a name. So like this is called the Sarika Hills. So we have to place a quest token there. We have to do that in all those locations. Now, how you know how many quest tokens you need to put on the board is you do three plus a player plus one. So normally in, in this two player game, that would be seven. But when you're playing cooperatively, you always do four a player. So we're going to have a total of eight of these on the board. And I just randomly distributed the ones that were not ones that had specific titles. Now, when you have a specific game session, you might not even uh, quest in half of these locations. You may, it just depends on how you play it. So I would say there's actually a lot of replayability just in the fact that you can choose different quest locations and you might not even go to all the quest locations. We also will want to place our standees right here in Eastry the uh, town. Next, let's go ahead and set up the town. Now, there are a couple different things because I am using the Amber Mines expansion and I'm using the day side of the board. So there's a day and a night sign. The day sign is supposed to be for more uh, uh, skilled players or after you've played a couple times. So I have played three times. So I felt like, hey, I kind of like this. And the biggest reason is I like having the options of turtles versus pack birds. And I'll talk about that uh, as we go through the playthrough. How you set up this board is the first thing here over on the left side, those are our adventure tokens. You're going to grab five adventures from that adventure bag and place them out on the board. Just make sure that they're on the near and far side, not on the above and below side. Okay. Each one of those will give certain benefits if you decide to recruit them. Up top here, this is our reputation track, and 
you can see here we start at 0. You can go all the way to negative 6 or all the way to positive 7. I shouldn't say positive 7. It's, um, what is it, um, 10, 11, 12, a total of 12. You get 7 uh, journey points if at the end of the game you're all the way up here. If at the end of the game you're down over here, you get minus two points. And that's also a change on the day side. On the night side of the board, you don't have negative points in the negative reputation area. On the night side of the board, you're going to have your pack bird and your turtle. So your turtle, you can purchase by paying one gem. Over here with the pack bird, you just have to pay one food. The nice thing about the turtle is it gives you one additional movement and one time when you're moving through an empty space, you don't have to lose one heart. Versus the pack bird, it's simply going to allow you to move an additional space and you can do all the other things that the turtle can do, like hold a treasure, etc., which you'll see in the playthrough. But uh, this one just gives you that one additional benefit. But you have to give up a gem, which are a little bit more rare than food. Also with the expansion, there is an upgraded general store action. So normally it was just come here to either draw four artifact cards and keep as many as you want, or gain one coin, to instead be gain one coin and two hearts, <laughs> sweet, uh, gain four, uh, and you can do all of these items here. So gain one coin, two hearts, draw four artifact cards, keep as many as you want, and if you kept any, you can also place one of your artifact cards as well. So it, actually, I shouldn't say that. If you buy one of the artifact cards, aka play one down on the table, while you're here at the general store, when you're doing that action, you can place one of your camp tokens here. And that just helps you get to the end of the game. Because once someone removes all 14 of their camp tokens on their player board, the game ends. I should also mention on the side of the board, you want to place these four chief cards, one for each of the factions. The first player to get four of the same type of adventure, so let's say this red type or blue type, if you have four of those, you immediately grab one of these chief cards and they give you five journey points at the end of the game. The other new overlay we have is the Mystic Hut and the Mine. So the Mystic Hut, I am going to play with magic, which is really cool because you can gain spells and everything like that. So if you come to the Mystic Hut, you can gain treasures per this eye symbol. You can potentially pay gems to move up your magic abilities, and you can refresh all of your spells. So here's your treasures, and we'll look at the spells and everything in a second. Over here, we now have a mine action, and we have a whole deck of cards for the mine. Instead of using something that's just on the board here that you can see, we're no longer doing this type of action based on skill. We are doing something totally different using the amber mine cards. Here we have the opening to the mine. So what we can do during our turn is come to the mine and then use our movement points to move through the mine. So if there's a downspout, we can move down. Otherwise, you can always move to the right or to the left. So we can move one over to the right, and we draw the next card. And we see, okay, there's no amber in this location, but there is a, a ruby and a coin if we decide to put our camp token here. But there's no downspout, so we can't go down from this location. So you're going to be moving around the mine, and then at the end of your movement, you can pay it to place one of your camp tokens in that location and then gain the benefit on the card. Now, the first time you put a camp token here, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Normally, to place camp tokens on the board, it costs three hearts. So it's actually a great way to get some camp tokens out. The thing is, every time you place another camp token in the mine, you have to pay one food per the amount of camp tokens you already have in the mine. So if I have three camp tokens in the mine, I'm trying to place my fourth, I have to pay three food. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most amber that they have their camp tokens on, they will gain five points. The second most will gain three. And this is maybe a good point to talk about how in the cooperative game you win together. So you're each going to score your points at the end of the game, and then you're going to compare it to a track that, depending upon the amount of players, you're going to take the number of wherever the um, turn marker ends on that track and multiply the amount of, by the amount of players. You compare that number to the total value of everyone's score. If our score is higher than that amount, we win. And there's one other thing we have to do. We have to defeat the two boss cards. 
Now, if you're playing with three or four players, then you'll have three or four bosses. We only have these two bosses since we're only playing with two players. So we have to defeat these two bosses, and they do not give us the victory points stated here. So normally you gain victory points when you defeat bosses. You don't get that in the cooperative mode. Now, how do we gain spells? Well, each time you go to the Mystic Hut and you see one of those star symbols that look kind of like this, you gain one of the, uh, up on this magic track. Every time you land on a location that has these icons, so three times potentially, you gain a spell card. But what you do is you draw the top three spell cards and then you get to choose one of them to keep. And they give you a one-time benefit and then you flip that card face over. And you can't use it again until you go back to the Mystic Hut and then you refresh all of your spell cards and you can use them again. Each spell card gives you a victory point. And if you get to the end of this track, you get to place uh, a camp token here and you'll gain two journey points at the end of the game. Here we have a player board. Now, both the player board of Riza and Greer are going to be identical at the beginning of the game, especially since we both picked the same talent. <laughs> so you start off at zero hearts, and hearts will only get refreshed whenever you start going on an adventure from the city. And you'll see how that works in the playthrough. You each get to start with a pet because that pet is going to give you your starting heart value if you decide to go on an adventure. So if we decide to go on an adventure on the mat or the map, we would move our hearts to two, and then we'd start moving on the map. We each start with three coins, and then because of fishing, one food. Here are our 14 camp tokens. Once that 14th one is placed, that denotes the end of the game and everyone gets their final turn. So let's say if Greer was first player and he got uh, completed his 14 camp tokens, uh, Riza would still get one turn. But if Riza finished the game and placed 14 camp tokens, the game would be over because everyone had taken the same amount of turns. You also have a location up here to hold your pack birds or your uh, turtles. And then for every one of those, you can then hold treasure cards. And if you can hold, if you have three treasure cards at the end of the game, you get five journey points. And now to talk about the cooperative mode. So how cooperative mode works. Based upon the amount of players and how difficult you want to be, you place your uh, a coin here on the round tracker. Okay, so we're going to play at the normal difficulty two player we start here. At the beginning of each round, we're going to move this one space up. And every time we move to a location that has one of these sword symbols, we're going to draw one of these uh, minion cards. If the minion card has one of these symbols, this immediately happens. So we have this says all discard one treasure. Gross. Then we place this minion in the Mystic Hut's location. Now, we can still go to the Mystic Hut's location and ignore the minion, but we can also, if we want, fight or duel this minion. And how we do that is we look if we decide if we want to use swords or if we want to use our skill. If we use our swords, we have to get eight or higher. If we do our skill, we want to get five or higher. If we can do that, you can only do it once per the time that you go to that location, you place a coin there. Okay, so you can see I've half defeated that minion. Now, either I have to come back there in a future turn or another player can come over there and they decide and are able to defeat this minion's sword spot. Now this minion has been defeated. You discard the minion. Whoever defeated the minion gains this benefit, which would be two reputation and two coins. And yeah, so these coins came from the reserve. So it's not like someone's losing coins and then gets them later. You're going to gain two coins when you defeat minions. And yet, minions don't stop you from winning or losing the game. They just provide you with more ways of gaining coins, more ways of gaining reputation, and they also attack you, which is annoying. The last part of setup is we draw six basic artifact cards and two advanced artifact cards per player. Now, playing competitively, you would be drafting these back and forth. I grab one, I hand them to you. You grab one, you hand it back to me. But in cooperative, you get what you get. What is the same, though, is you can look at these cards and decide which ones you want to discard at the onset. Because remember, any card that's left in your hand at the end of the game that you haven't been able to craft, you gain minus one journey point. 
So you don't want to just hold on to all of them unless you think you can really craft all of them. And let me tell you, it's not the easiest to craft them. They are expensive. The thing is, though, they all give you a benefit and usually some sort of journey points. So over here we have Greer's hand and over here we have Reese's hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip them over. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking of potentially discarding, but then I'd love to know what you guys think. Maybe you've played it or maybe you just go, oh, it'd be awesome if you could try and build this card. So let me know. Here we have the eight cards for Greer. Now, this one seems pretty cheap. It just gives us one skill icon. I think we might as well keep it. I also see this Rust Bot too. I mean, yeah, six coins, two bread, and we need to have a red faction token, but it gives us two hearts and a sword. I'm thinking of keeping that one. <laughs> now, this plus two to dual rolls, I don't really duel much uh, in the cooperative mode. You can still duel to increase your reputation, but there's so many other ways now to increase reputation, like taking out minions and whatnot, that I think I'm going to discard this one. It just doesn't seem worth it. There's this card over here, gain one food when you build a camp on a gem space. Yeah, I don't really think that's wonderful. Um, I do like this Iron Hound, though. One heart and one skill. So thinking of keeping this one. This one, gain one coin when you build a camp on a trade route space. Uh, once again, not great, but I do think I'm going to do a trade route because in this location, if I build a trade route, it's 10 journey points. So this would give me a coin if I did that, but I'm probably only going to do that once. You know, I'm thinking of discarding this one, but yeah, let me know what you think. This one, gain two magic when you defeat a threat. Hmm. Oh, looking at this, we have to have minus three reputation. I'm just going to tell you now, when you play this cooperatively, you're, I mean, at least the three times I've played, I've always had tons of positive reputation. So I think I'm going to get rid of this one. That means I'm probably going to keep this fog helm or frog helm. It's not great, but it's also not that expensive once you get your reputation up and it gives us a heart. So just to recap, here's the four I'm thinking of keeping. But yeah, let me know what you think. Here we have the eight for Riza. And the first thing that I see is when training for the town hall, you may trade twice. Heck yes. So many times I want to be able to do that and I can't. It's only four coins worth three victory points. Keeping that one. <laughs> you may have up to two of the same faction in your active party. So normally you can only have one faction per um so you only have one adventure per faction on your mat at a time and so that usually means that if i'm trying to go for a chief it's hard because i'm going for the same faction adventures but i can't even use them so that's an awesome card i think i'm going to keep that one this one here the firefly staff oh my gosh 15 points but if i do that i, do, I mean look at this i need to have my reputation all the way to the top eight gems that is super expensive that's like end game worthy <sighs> i'm really curious what you guys think am i even going to be able to do that i don't know i like the rust bot eight and what does this one do plus four points if you have the most unspec coins and gems at the game end ah oh, just i mean it's still nine points regardless um yes yeah, so all three of these i don't know Definitely not doing this one because of the minus two reputation. That should be really easy to make, but I have enough other ones that maybe I'll just, yeah, whatever. I'm thinking no. Uh, you need not pay a heart for one skip space per turn. Yeah, two coins still gives us a point. I like it. Well, looking here, this is obviously too many artifacts, so I need your help. What do you guys think I should get rid of? Maybe this Firefly staff is just too expensive. Maybe I can do it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, let me know what you think. There you have it, folks. That's how you set up near and far with the Amber Mines expansion, looking for co-op play specifically. I hope you guys are excited. I am so excited to do this one with you guys. I cannot wait. Let's get to some stories. Let's go ahead and adventure, and let's beat those minions and bosses so we can win the game. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you at the next stop.